Hey everybody, welcome to Leon's Chainsaw Parts and Repair. So we're looking at a saw that was shipped to me uh, by the seller on eBay, but it's for a gentleman overseas, Marco. And I want to say, God, I want to say he's in Greece, but I, I can't remember. It's been too, too long since uh, we conversed. Uh, but he bought this saw, the seller advertised it as new old stock, never been run. I don't believe that to be true, but it hasn't been run much. I'll, I'll give him that much. Uh, let me get this barn chain off of here and get it out of the way. Number one, I ran it a little bit, just like a quick squirt to diagnose what's wrong with it because it wouldn't start. But you can see the oil here. You know, this hasn't this was run probably to test it when it was brand new. That's gonna be my guess. But the reason I believe it's been run more than just what I did, is you can see the marks on the sprocket teeth there. Now it's not much, it's not like they're worn, but just other, you can usually tell looking at a saw whether it's been run or not. Now, you look back here, and there's some, that's a wood chip. Okay. Would help if I didn't drop it. You know, that doesn't get in there from the factory. So, I mean, it's a low hour saw, like uber low hour, probably less than an hour. Anyway. The whole point, Marco wanted me to get the thing, go through it, make sure it was running right before it gets shipped overseas. Now, it's not running right. And I want to show you real quickly how I diagnosed what I did. We're going to be doing an intake boot on this saw. Where is there? We go. I'm not going to give this much of a prime. I put fuel in it as requested and went to start it and it, it would not start and of course the next step is verify that you've got good spark that's why I know is to give it a little prime so listen to what it does here I'm not gonna choke it and I'm not gonna set the throttle latch You're out revved up and then boom, that's done. Wasn't as exaggerated as I'd like it to be, but you get the picture. Rev and die. Okay, I didn't have the throttle pulled. It shouldn't have revved. There's an air leak. Almost certainly going to be that intake boot. Almost certainly. We're going to find out. I've got a lot of videos out there, but I don't know that I've ever done with it one with a teardown to get to the boot on one of these things. So we're going to do that right now. You got to get your, your front handle out of the way. Number one. And I'm going to do this taking as few pieces off as possible, but as you're going to see, you don't have a lot of choice. You got to take some stuff apart to get to the boot. The good news is it's not difficult. These are these are not a difficult saw to work on once you know what you've got to work with. Front handles out of the way. All right. So you've got AV mounts. You've got one here. You got one there, and there's one hidden under here. That's what this screw right there is. But you've also got your tie-in with your bootstrap or handle brace, whatever the hell you want to call that, right here. But to get to that intake boot, you've got to get this top cover all the way off, and you can see the bottom cover is screwed straight to that bottom cover you can't get off until you pull this lower AV screw. So there's a little series of stuff you got to remember so that you don't get frustrated. 
So we're going to take that out. You'll notice I always start breaking these loose with not, not using the ball end of these. These round off the ball end like the first time you put any real torque to them. So it pays to, to use the squared end, break it loose, and then you can use it you know, in the fast mode. Now that that's out of the way, we're going to go ahead and remove the bootstrap and this lower cover and just get that taken care of. Okay. Oh. And I almost forgot. The starter attaches to both halves, so you've got to get it out of the way first. And those are quarter inch head. So really, should have taken the starter off first. But at least I remembered. So now this half will come off. Notice I left the spark plug in. I had to rotate this over it. That's why I was being gentle there. I didn't want to break anything. See, there's another piece of debris that leads me to believe that this cut at least a stick of wood. Alright, so from here, the rest of our work, we can do it with the engine sitting up. You can leave the oil cap on and the oil tank and all of that, in, or uh, oil in the tank. What we've got to do is get all the stuff out of the carburetor chamber, unfortunately. You can't leave any of that stuff in place. Keep your quarter inch socket handy, as you'll need it for the oil pump, but we'll do the carb first. And this choke linkage has some special stuff on it. You got your top spacer, which also serves as the spacer for the linkage itself, and you've got that wave washer to put a little tension on it. That's all got to work together. And when you're putting the cover back on, which I already had off, but I'll show you, you got to align the choke knob into there so that everything works right. It's not a big deal, you just got to pay attention. All right. Now it's got some fuel in that tank. I'm going to take the cap off so when we disconnect these hoses, we don't have a big kishplug. This is the vacuum one over here that's coming up, right there. The supply is down at the bottom. Once the vacuum is loose, you can start working the grommet up. Break that rubber loose. Come on, baby. Stubborn son of a gun today. Normally, I don't have to fight with a carburetor to get her to come loose like that. I don't want to pry on the adjustment needles too much here. Like, not really, not at all. There she goes. There we go. So, as it's coming up, Try and keep that grommet in place. Make your life easier. All right. I've got the damn chamber gasket stuck to the bottom of the carb, which is not supposed to happen. But things happen that you don't expect. So when you get the curb up high enough, then you can come for the fuel hose right there, the supply hose. Ah, and that's rotten too. 
I'll be damned. Time has done some damage to this poor thing. I'm pushing this chamber gasket off the bottom of the carve. That is just not what I need to have happen here. Because you've got to get the carb up. There we go. And then it'll slip off your linkage, your throttle rod, which is right there. That gasket really shouldn't glue to the damn bottom of the carb like that. You can slip it back down where it belongs. There we go. All right. Once the carburetor's out of the way, you can see there's actually two screws that hold that chamber plate to this top cover. That chamber plate cannot or should not come out with this throttle handle and tank assembly. Now the next trick, we've got to disconnect the oil pump and we're going to need to plug that hose so it doesn't sit there and ooze. A little screw will do it. Just don't go so big that you stretch the hose out. That's perfect. I really hate messing with one of these that's working. I'm such a finicky bastard of a pump. But... And this has its own rubber gasket. See, she was primed up, and now she's going to make a big old fat mess. So, I'm a big choice, but to let her make a mess, I'm just let set it to the side. I'm going to keep it upside down in hopes that it doesn't lose all of its prime. You guys have seen my previous videos on 330s know that they can be a... Yeah, that's just a pain to get the oil right. Now the gasket didn't tear, thankfully. He's got some remnants of that foam cover gasket that has deteriorated to dust. We'll replace that and we'll put everything back together. All right. The rest of that is the oil supply well, so it doesn't matter if there's some oil in there. So let's go ahead and pull these two screws loose to loosen that chamber plate. Okay. Those are the same size screw as those starter cover. So I mean it really doesn't matter if you mix them up but I like to keep everything step separate because the starter cover screws have still got some old Loctite on them those chamber screws don't use any Loctite, so... Alright, that's loose. Yeah, I can already see the broken... <laughs> oh, broken uh, intake boot there. Or at least see movement that I shouldn't see. So we'll take these other AV screws loose. Pay attention! These are the same AV mounts that you find on or some of the hardware is the same as what you find on a VI Super 2. Now you want to pay attention to where you have a second cup washer and where you don't. Because some of these it's not accessible to put one in there, so they didn't use it. This upper one does use it. And I think the lower one uses none and that may be true up here. It may only be the cup washers here. It's been a while since I've been into one of these. Before I go any further, let's see if I can do this without spilling fuel. We need to get the switch unplugged too. Pay attention to where the leads go. It's, it's not as critical because of the operation, but critical because the earlier versions of these saws were well known for melting a muffler lead, or melting a coil lead to the muffler. 
giving you a no spark situation. So like this one that's insulated and longer, if it was on this terminal over here, look how much closer it is to the muffler. That matters. So the short lead goes furthest in on this saw. And I'm spilling fuel out of the fuel supply hose. Yep. Now we're going to remove this back screw, the final AV mount screw. And then comes the fun part. Okay. So the fuel tank is going to stay put. You've got to get it to come loose. The first time you try to do this, it'll probably be frustrating as hell. And actually every time after that. But you got to get it to a point where it will come off. But you've got to clear the back mount. And you see how that happened? Just like that. You clear that back mount and you're twisting it like this. And you may have to jiggle your fuel tank to get it to come loose around here, but all of a sudden, poof, away she goes. And there you are. Like I said early on, it's nothing extremely difficult, but if you don't know what you're looking for, it can be a pain in the ass. All right. You see what I'm doing here? If that intake boot was still connected, it wouldn't move like that. All right, so what we're gonna do Get the fuel tank out of the way. I gotta put a new fuel hose on that. The rest of these hoses don't look terrible. Turn this so that hopefully you guys can see a little better. There we go. Uh, we'll go up like that. See this? See that? That boot just shrank and disconnected. There's nothing else I can say for it. So there's a bunch of hose connections here you don't want to foul up, but you got to get this chamber out of the way to work on it. So you've got the oil pump pulse way back here. You've got the carburetor pulse in that port right there. That's oil pump, that's carburetor, and then this is the oil pump outlet. I'm just going to start getting them the hell out of the way. Okay. Now, none of those hoses broke. And this one, the oil pump one, actually has a spring in it to keep it from collapsing. But there, you can see what's left of that old intake boot. And that's an intake boot that was hardly ever run. That rubber was just not stable. I, there's nothing else I can say for it. It was not stable. And to be fair, it's 38 year old rubber. So I don't know. Get this loose, this retainer, and shulk. There you are. So there's the rest of the intake boot. You got to get all this crap cleaned out of here. Usually a flat blade screwdriver is all it takes. Oop. That's crusty. But not so crusty. There's a little bit of flex left to it. And this is actually this is drawing moisture. As the rubber deteriorated, I'm actually finding some rust on this damn plate. Nasty. That's not clean. I'm going to have to use the wire wheel on the bench grinder to clean all that shad up. Because we're not putting a new boot in there and trying to seal it up. 
with all that trash in place. shape of this doesn't allow the wire wheel to do everything I want to do. So, without stabbing yourself, once you've done what you can with the machine, you can do it the old-fashioned way and just scrape. I don't want to distort a new boot with remnants of this old rubber, and I don't want to start rot. Whatever the chemical breakdown was, I don't want to get it started on the new rubber. Now, it should be much better, of course, but use a little of my spilled fuel here. To... There's still going to be discoloration, but all the chunkers are out. Okay. Now, it doesn't have to be spotless. I mean, if you're not eating off of it. But you want to get most of the crap out of it. And I can see that some remnants have fallen down into the reed assembly here. I could just get the air hose and blow that out. But, in case you want to inspect your reeds, that your retainer boot has got to come out. And you can see the little bit of junk down in there. dust and debris. There is more on this side than I would care to see. I'm thinking that the one time it was run that foam gasket might have already been given. It might be a failing already. Now why are you Uh, turn it the right way, dummy. There we go. Okay. So, the other half of your cleanup project is this carburetor chamber, unfortunately. Now that will be best served with an air hose. All that junk. I'll be right back. So now we need to get all the crap out of here, this old boot. Now, I don't want to damage that gasket, so we're going to take it out for now. And I also want to clean up all the spilled oil, because it'll just be a dust attractant down the road. You could just spray this down with carburetor cleaner, but if you do that, be careful. Don't leave your rubber parts exposed to it for too long because it will attack them. Alright, that boot should be soft and pliable. Ugh. Nasty. That's yeah, just destroyed. Okay. 
Okay. Once you get that top lip worked off, the rest of it will come out pretty easily. But just like down by the reed valve, I'll get all this trash broken loose. So that the new one will actually seal in here appropriately. And the moisture that it drew will cause corrosion. I'm actually scraping some minor corrosion off right here that was underneath the rubber. Something about that rubber decomposing does that. Alright, hit that with the air hose again. That'll do. Okay. Cleanup is almost done. I'm going to go ahead and wipe that gasket down before I forget. Now, a lot of people's first instinct when you go this far is to replace all these gaskets. If they ain't torn up, don't replace them. Especially this little guy. This little oil gas is getting hard to find. And, I mean, they don't fail that often honestly I think way more gaskets get replaced than need to on these all right let me dig out a fresh boot lots of times I order these on eBay they're all gonna be made in you know some Asian country this particular one is Taiwan I personally have found BBT stuff to be not bad not bad at all So that is what a proper intake boot for one of these should look like. Flexible. You know? It's got to move with the saw as it's running. So, you want to slip that bad boy over the reed assembly. And it'll drop right in. Put your retainer on. And now, we've turned the corner and we're reassembling. I say, it's not difficult to do one of these. You just gotta go in the right order and know what to expect. And hopefully this video will help you guys know what to expect. Alright, so remember oil pump goes to the back. If you're taking it off, your hoses are going to stay pretty well formed and drop into place about where they need to. But the oil pump pressure line is all the way over here. The carburetor pulse line is right there. And then the third hose is the oil pump outlet line that goes over here by the bar pad. I'll start with the shortest and most difficult first, which being the oil pump pressure. And then I'll do the carburetor pulse. And the oil outlet. Okay. Now, pull some of this back. You got to work the new boot up so that it comes up over the lip in here. Let's see if I can. And the boot, being new, is flexible enough to do this. And if you're careful, you don't even have to be super careful, but you don't want to be poking at it with a sharp object. I mean, just use a little common sense. You can use a an awl or something like that, a drift pin tool, if you need to. But see, that one popped into shape pretty good, and it's sitting high above the carburetor chamber, high enough the carburetor is going to seal to that without getting tight to this gasket. That gasket, you know, that's not your primary seal. It's that boot to the bottom of the carburetor. In fact, you can see remnants of the old boot still on the bottom of the carburetor. I'm going to have to run this over the wire wheel and get all that crap off too. Alright, 
So that's back in place. I mean, new boot installed. So, as you recall, all right, they put those felt pads around the fuel hoses. Those are going to rot and fall away every time. They're not critical. Don't worry about that. But we do need to get that hose out. Because a good quarter of an inch tore off. That old filter, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. It hasn't done anything. Alright, now, you didn't have a handy dandy chart in your shop like I do, you could just measure the old hose and add, you know, half an inch to it. I'm going to go to my cheat sheet. 330 oil, or excuse me, fuel supply. Seven and a half. I'm going to cut it to eight. Make my life easy. Eight by three sixteen toes that I'm putting in. Very close to the original size. This has swollen a little bit. But where it passes through the tank should be just right. That's not gonna leak. And with that angle cut, I could use a wire to pull this in place, but don't need to. I'll get enough fat in there that I can grab it with my hook. Maybe. Come on. Okay. Snip the angle cut end off. It's not an OEM fuel filter. Sure would like to know the true history of this saw. Now, I may have pulled too much into the tank, but I like to start there and then pull a little bit back out as I need it. Slip it in where it belongs, but get your fuel hose up through there. It's a great time to check your duckbill valve. This one came out intact. It's not shut, not stuck shut. It's not rotten, so I'm going to keep it. But if you came to one that was an old black one, if it doesn't crumble, it's going to goo. I'd almost guarantee it. If you see orange, you're more likely to be in good shape. Not a guarantee, though. Inspect it closely. All right. So as I was saying before, there's none of the, the shoulder cup washers on this one or the lower AV mount. Because we didn't have anything fall out. So that's good. I'm ready to drop this cover back into place. And again, you just kind of got to go by feel. Get your fuel tank started here. And maybe wiggle it around a little bit. I'd like to know... Well, the factory trained their techs to do this, because I'll tell you what. Even the... whoop, shit. Almost had it. Even the way I do it here is kind of a pain. You can't get hung up. She's starting to go. can't get hung up get too far. Damn it. There. Yeah, she's gonna go. 
down. Got to go over to the right. There she goes. And just like that, has dropped back into place. Hey, I don't know any other easy, any other easier way than what I just did. So, I wish I did. Find the right height, and I'm not there. damage that. We will start with the ones that we can get to easier. At least get the front to back set here. There, that's what it was. Get your washer into place. And then we get this one. Honestly, all things related to this tank assembly are the hardest part of this whole job. Get it off and then get it back on. Don't normally have as much hassle getting these AV mounts restarted as I'm having right now, but every saw is different. Okay. I'm not going to tighten that down all the way. So I want it a little loosey goosey. Okay. Now that I got the tank in place, I'm going to go ahead and put this cap on because I'm tired of worrying about getting splashed in the face. But I'm going to leave it loose so it doesn't pressurize and start puking here. All right, so I had a problem. It pulled this AV mount out. That's a huge problem. Damn, I hope I don't end up getting hosed by this. I haven't had that happen before. I'm going to poke it out and see if I can reset it from this side. Wish I could show you that on the camera, but no way. No way in the world. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to get it out of there. Damn it. Come on. Out by the muffler. <laughs> I don't recall ever having that happen. So the question is can I reset it from this side? That rubber mount is still really, really pliable. More so than most. It's not rotten. Damn. I hate to lose everything I've done to have to reset this. God, that would make me upset. Really, really upset. Come on, you. Almost got it set. Damn it! Come on! You son of a gun! God, come on! Not enough room to see and put your fingers. Well, shit. That's a piss off. And dang it. Yes, sometimes it happens. Well, I don't recall that happening to me before, not with that AV mount.
I will say, this is not one of my favorite designs. back where you belong and stay there this time. Heard. And I will try to be gentler about setting this in place. having so much trouble aligning this front one. say we're back on track. And hopefully not jinxes. Come on, baby. That's right, that goes through the bottom case. You gotta remember that. Dipstick. Quit perking fuel. start reassembling everything. Again, I'm going to hope this oil pump kept enough of its prime that I don't have to screw with it again. Just drops down into place. We'll put our two chamber screws back in before I get a mess of hoses in the way. Careful, you don't over tighten them. Alright, we'll put our oil supply hose back. That was soft hose. From the factory, it's very small, very thin. All right, that has slipped into place. Ugh. Let's put our carb back on. But remember, I got it this piece of junk hose to get off. Huh, even that has started to rot. And I need to run the wire wheel over that edge. Much better. 
bit. Throttle bracket on. And I'm not going to hook up the fuel hose yet. I want to get the carb set in place. Remember all those spacers, make sure they line up properly and you don't end up distorting this choke plate. Okay, you don't have to get crazy with tightening that down. That rubber boot will seal without a whole lot of effort. Now remember I said I probably put too much in the tank of the fuel hose. Pull out enough that I can make this connection and then assess to see if there's any sharp bends. Okay. Looks like I got it without any drama. I may have pulled a little too much out. No. That's perfect. Should have hooked a, the vacuum hose at first, but there's enough room there. Nice sweeping bends, no kinks. Fuel cap not tight, so now I have gas on my hand again. You can probably avoid that step at home if you'd like. Although it adds something to the experience. All right. Let's hook up, before they get forgotten, hook up the kill switch leads in the proper order. Make sure they're routed properly. They are. That is not touching the muffler. <sighs> Fuel cap is tight. Rotate over your spark plug wire if you haven't pulled it loose, like I haven't mine. Okay. Now, if you've taken the, if you're having trouble getting these screws started, remember they got to go straight down. If you cock to any kind of an angle, they're not going to hit at the right spot. These are not hitting in the right spot. There. Okay. Hey, now. And that's what happens when young Caitlin leaves her earmuffs right in the middle of my bench and I don't pay attention as I'm sitting down the impact driver. It goes on the floor, which I'm sure is great for it. Starter back on. Forget to put your last AV mount screw in with everything assembled like this. You can see the sleeve right there, so this shouldn't be a pain in the neck. And now we can 
put our top handle back on. All right, so all that this is going to leave is a new foam gasket up here. Now, I would say 95% of all the 330s that are out there running right now, they don't have this foam gasket anymore. They've all deteriorated, fallen off. I think I have some. Damn if I know where. I gotta go to the computer for that, but it's not important for right now. I will replace it. But I want to show you guys the proper way to align this top cover. You can see your choke knob is built into it. Choke is that way. That's what I find personally the easiest is to put it together with a full choke. So you've got it here. Flip the lever over until it's all the way closed. Flip that till it's all the way closed. Then come in and gently set it down. Now you're indexed. It's that simple. But critical. If you jam that up, bend it, your choke's not going to work and cause you all kinds of grief when you go to start a cold engine. Speaking of starting a cold engine, let's find out if we have any more surprises lurking for us. Oh, hey, it would help if I had the choke on, wouldn't it? That's a little better. Maybe. Saw. Ha. Two. Try this again. This saw had been attempted to be tuned with that blown boot. Oh, 
Come on. I'm going to say somebody attempted to tune this. I'm not going to be able to see what that carburetor's doing. Oh, yeah, the idle. The idle speed is backed all the way out. That's better. You can tune you can tune everything with the cover on. You see you can get to those screws, you can get to the idle screw, but what you can't see is how much fuel is coming up out of the carburetor. And I was actually paying attention to that. I thought it sounded way too rich, but I wanted to see that for myself. When it fuels coming out of that high-speed nozzle and hitting this side of the, the Venturi and just... It's one of the ways I help tune a saw. You know, that helps me get the saw where it needs to be. So, anyway. This one is basically good to go. I need to put that foam gasket in. I need to find some hardware for the bucking spike that's going to go on it. I know that was a request. But other than that, this one's good to go. And that, including the cussing, is what it takes to change an intake boot on a whole mic uh, 330.